I was going to do a video on training muscle fiber types. I'm going to get into that soon. But first, Chris Bell asked me about stevia and whether or not it's estrogenic. Now, I really respect and admire Chris Bell, love his documentaries, every single one of them. And so I'm putting the exercise training muscle fiber type videos and, and episodes into an upcoming episode. I want to talk about stevia. Let's get this. Let's get through this. He says this is a really common question. Is it acting like estrogen? Is it causing problems? Because there's a paper here, 1968, in the Journal of Science. This is back before the Journal of Science was so gigantic, but still, it's called Contraceptive Properties of Stevia Rebadinia, or whatever the Latin word is, Stevia. Rebadinia. <laughs> stevia, we'll just call it Stevia. Uh, I'll not even try and pronounce this, the full name. But they start off in this paper. They say stevia is a Paraguayan weed containing a sweet substance called steviaside. Steviaside. Okay. It's been used, blah, blah, blah. Indians have used a dry powdered leaf decoction and stems of the plant as an oral contraceptive, they say. So they took rats. They had 14 of them. They boiled up some of the dry powdered weed. They boiled it. And then they gave it to the rats. 14 of them were given it. 14 were not given it. After 12 days, they said, there was a reduction. 50, they mated them. There was a 50% reduction in fertility in the stevia group. But that's only 14 rats, but still, 50% reduction is huge. Did they follow up? Definitely. 2008, I've got a paper here from the Peruvian Journal of Biology. It's called Long-Term Effects of the Consumption of Stevia Rebidinia on the fertility of mice. Okay, not rats, mice. The objective of this work, they say, was to you know, look at the long-term effects. Extracts of stevia leaves on the number of offspring. Microscopic morphology of the genitals. Levels of testosterone and estrogen in these mice. Okay, that's a lot of different things. And what did they do? They looked at different mice. They gave them 3.75 grams of stevia per kilogram of body weight, three grams per kilogram, tons of this stuff. Seven in a different group, so they had a group with zero, they didn't give them any stevia. And then this group, they gave them 3.75 grams of it per kilogram of body weight. Then they gave another group 7.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. And then another group, they gave them 15 grams per, ki per kilogram of body weight. Tons of stevia for 120 days in a row. What did they find? Levels of testosterone, were significantly different. In the controls with the zero stevia, they were 1.0, 1.02. In the group with 3.75 grams, they were 1.12. In the next group, they were 1.16. In the next group, they were 1.21. So actually, testosterone was steadily rising as they overdosed on stevia. Estrogen, same thing. Steadily ro ri rose from 20 to 30 to 33 to 43. But they found no differences in the weight of the uterus and all the, in the ovaries and all these things. They found the libido of male mice treated with these high doses of stevia increased. And they concluded that consumption of stevia does not affect the fertility in mice. Okay, so that's mice. The other one was rats. They're still pretty small groups. Let's dig in further. This is interesting. 1991, the Journal of Human Reproduction. I've got a research paper here. It's called The Effects of Stevia Side. And I'm emphasizing stevia side because later I'll mention why. I'll tell you why. Effects of stevia side on growth and reproduction. So the effect on growth and reproduction in hamsters, looking at stevia side, why hamsters? Just a different model. Hamsters are unique because they don't make their own vitamin C, just like humans. Rats and mice can actually make vitamin C within their own bodies. Most animals can. Um, but they extracted stevia side. Um, they gave them to 10 males, 10 females. They are force-fed this stuff because they're giving them 2.5 grams per kilogram body weight, tons of it, just like the other studies. No abnormalities were found in growth. All males mated females efficiently and successfully. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the offspring and the next generation and the next generation after that continued receiving stevia side and had normal growth and normal fertility. So they gave them the three generations and just hit them hard. 
they looked at histology, meaning they took apart their gonads. They didn't find any abnormalities, reproductive tissues, no evidence of abnormalities. They concluded there was neither an effect on growth nor reproduction in hamsters. Okay, so there's a lot of interesting kind of, you know, back and forth going on here. Let's keep going. 2003, the effect of stevia side and steviol on the developing broiler embryo. So there's two different things, stevia side, steviol. What did they find? This is in the Journal of Agricultural Food Chemistry, by the way. They injected eggs, for fertile eggs, chicken eggs, with steviocide and steviol, gave them a bunch of different doses, and they found there was no influence on the different treatments on mortality, body weight, deformations, etc., etc., gonads. So they found it's not toxic for chicken embryos. Another test, another no issue test. So I want to flash up on the screen a picture of steviocide, which I have here. And the reason for that is it's this, you know, it's this big molecule, but then it's got these sugar groups on them. Um, and, but, and there's a difference between stevia side and steviol because steviol does not have those sugar groups. They're cut off. And then finally, and most of stevia is stevia sides. And it's, an, there's another chemical in there called rebodicide, rebodicide. <laughs> just can't seem to pronounce it, but I'm going to put that picture up as well because that looks similar to stevia side. It's a molecule and then it's got these sugar groups. Okay, so that's the structure. That's what it looks like. And the reason that's important is because stevia side and stevia all have different health impacts. Phytochemistry, I have a paper here from the journal Phytochemistry. It's from 2003. It's a review of stevia side. To review, it's putting together all this research. What do they find? The metabolism of steviocide is discussed in relation to possible formation of steviol. Can steviocide become steviol? Can those sugar groups break off and you get the steviol, which is potentially more, more of an issue, or not? Fertility studies were discussed as well as the effects of bioavailability of other nutrients in the diet. Does it affect the other, you know, proteins? fats in your body? Does it have an effect? The conclusion is that stevia and stevia side are safe when used as a sweetener. That's the conclusion, but let's dig in a little bit more than that. Okay, so that's what their conclusion is. That's what my conclusion is, by the way, but let's talk about this. They say the advantages of stevia side as a dietary supplement for humans are manifold. It's stable. It's non-calorific, they say. Maintains good health, dental health by reducing sugar intake possibly, you know, opens the use for diabetes, uh, et cetera, obese people. Okay, so they say there are mutagenic effects that have been found in steviol, okay? That's not stevia side, that's the one with the, the steviol is the one without those sugar groups. It's the A glycone of stevia side. They were reported in bacteria, salmonella bacteria in 1985. The direct mutagenic effects, these problematic effects, mutagenic meaning it causes mutations, they were refuted in 1991. Okay, so in 1985, they found it causes mutations. It's mutagenic. Then in 1991, they found it doesn't do that. But then, that, then they, in 2002, they found that it does do that. So at least in salmonella, in this bacteria, you can cause mutations with steviol. All right. And then they say here, very high doses of steviol. Um, within hamsters at four, kilo, at four grams per kilogram of body weight, we talked about that study, showed no issues but some cytotoxic effect. So some cells in the females had problems, but all the males were fine. That was in the year 2000. Um, and I'm going to come back to that in a second, but oral stevia side is not taken up in the human body, they say. This is the most important thing. Okay, The stevia side that you get when you have stevia, it, your body doesn't even take it up. Stays in your intestine, you pass it out. None of the digestive enzymes in your intestinal tract are able, in animals or humans, are able to degrade stevia side into steviol. So you can't even break it, in, you can't break stevia side into steviol. Nevertheless, they say in feeding experiments with rats and hamsters, stevia side was metabolized to steviol by the bacterial in the gut. Okay, so in rats and hamsters, the gut bacteria can break that down. Um, they say, it's never been proven that this happens in humans, but it's possible, of course. And then they say, but pigs that were given steviocide, they found that was completely broken down into steviol. 
Remember, steviol is potentially more problematic than steviacide. So they found when you give them steviacide, it's broken down into steviol. Um, and that was the only thing they found in the feces, but they found no steviacide or steviol in the blood of pigs. And pigs are a great model for humans. They're actually very comparable in terms of their gut and how that, you know, how the stuff ends up in the blood. So just basically a lot of neutral data, basically showing hmm, this isn't a real problem, right? It's not even getting into your blood. How is it causing a problem if it's not getting into your blood? Neither steviacide nor steviol. Even if it's broken down by gut bacteria, it's not getting into your blood. When steviol was fed to rats, it was easily taken up by the intestines of rats, they shown, they have shown. So that's different. So it's basically it's having a different effect on rats than it is in pigs and in hamsters. Um, and then they say finally in 1996, there was more reliable studies with more animals on the fertility issue and they found no effects. 1999, they suggested a possible decrease in fertility of male rats but they use these crazy high doses like I mentioned. I said I was gonna come back to that. They say for an adult person of 65 kilograms, this means 3.47 kilograms of dry stevia leaves would need to be taken every day. Kilograms of leaves, that's more than 50% of your body weight. So in other words, you literally have to eat more than 50% of your body weight in stevia and maybe it'll cause fertility issues. <laughs> That's basically the conclusion. I mean, that's what they're doing in these studies. They're, take, they're, they're force feeding these animals loads of this stuff, and they're really not even finding that much of a problem, let's be honest. And in animals like pigs, you know, it's not even getting into the blood. It's probably not even getting into the blood of humans, although I haven't seen that study. That would be a nice study to see, but it's not being done because I don't think there's a real concern. And, and not only that, there's positive impacts. Let's, let, let's talk about one example. In the year 2000, British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology, I've got a paper here, it's called A Double-Blind Placebo-Controlled Study of the Effectiveness and Tolerability of Oral Steviacide in Human Hypertension. High blood pressure. What happened? They had people with high blood pressure. They gave them 250 milligrams of steviacide three times a day for a year, but after three months, their blood pressure decreased in the steviacide group significantly, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this study shows oral steviacide is well tolerated and effective as an alternative or a supplementary therapy for patients with hypertension, high blood pressure. So it's actually effective in lowering blood pressure. And not only that, you'd think, okay, maybe it's just because they're eating less sugar. But they actually tracked that and they showed they ate the same amount of fats and the same amount of glucose and they had no significant changes in their blood glucose, for example and it still lowered your blood pressure. So even if you're eating the same amount of sugar, it's beneficial in cases of hypertension. I don't think it has any impact on your fertility. I don't think it's acting like estrogen. If anything, it's raising your estrogen and your testosterone, but that's only if you're taking 50% of your body weight, you know, in stevia leaves, and the whole steviol versus stevia side argument is pretty iffy because I don't think it's getting into your blood.